Hello, everyone. I'm Zhao Chuan. Let's meet Maxim the Baryonyx, a well-known dinosaur. When people first discovered this dinosaur, they unearthed one huge claw. The massive size of this claw led some people to believe it was from the dinosaur's feet, just like that of a dromaeosaurid, the Deinonychus. However, it was later found that this claw was from the forelimb. So this dinosaur was given Baryonyx as the generic name, meaning, heavy claws. With more bones of this dinosaur excavated, it turned out that the holotype specimen was well preserved, making Baryonyx one of the earliest complete spinosaurids known to people. Baryonyx possessed typical features of spinosaurids. First, its head was slender. The skull of Baryonyx was extraordinarily long and narrow, reminiscent of Suchomimus. Despite incomplete fossils and fragmentary skull, analysis of the intact mandible and the broken brain case suggests a notable feature, its slightly upward tilted mouth. Resembling many fish-eating dinosaurs, Baryonyx had a distinctive notch at the front of its mouth, which would fit into its lower jaw with a protrusion at the exact location. This structure could aid it in catching slippery prey when it closed its mouth. Resembling some aquatic animals, the nostrils of Baryonyx were situated slightly back from the snout tip, but not as exaggerated as Spinosaurus, whose nostrils were located completely at the top of the head. The nostrils of Baryonyx were just moved a bit backward. This positioning of nostrils might have helped it to catch fish in the water. Regarding the diet, we generally believe Baryonyx was piscivorous. Some early restorations depicted Baryonyx using its front claws to hook fish. However, from this model, you can see that although its front claws are a curved, sharp, and flexible structure that might catch a fish, it seems unlikely that it could use its claws to deliver the prey in its mouth, as its hands were still quite far from its mouth. The posterior of the skull of Baryonyx was well preserved, allowing for educated speculation that the rear half of its head was relatively high, shaped like a triangle. The lower jaw of this dinosaur was quite slender, resulting in a very narrow mouth when viewed from the front. Despite primarily feeding on fish, this dinosaur seemed to have other food on its menu. Like a bear, it would attack other animals, even some larger animals. Therefore, some early restorations often showed Baryonyx fighting with Iguanodon. Fossil evidence also displays that Baryonyx may have preyed on larger animals as well, not just fish. Baryonyx had a bulge in front of the eyes. Many spinosaurids possessed this typical feature and had a similar structure atop their head. Then, let's move on to its lower jaw. When examining its lower jaw, you can see the rear part is relatively wide. In the front of the snout, the two dentaries were spliced together tightly, forming such a structure that also made its mouth appear narrow. Therefore, when we restored its tongue, we speculated that this dinosaur might have a very short tongue and likely end, where the two bones meet, near the relatively wide part at the back of the mouth. Next is about this dinosaur's teeth. The teeth in its upper jaw were much larger and more sparsely spaced than those in the lower jaw. While the upper jaw fossils of Baryonyx are incomplete, we estimate there have been only about 20 teeth growing here. The more complete mandible teeth specimens indicate a figure of about 32 on each side, so the lower teeth were smaller and more densely arranged, especially the closer to the back of the mouth, the smaller the teeth there. I have seen the real teeth of Baryonyx, some of which are only this big, even smaller than those of some herbivorous dinosaurs. The complete fossil of Baryonyx demonstrates a very long and flexible neck. However, this neck was not very thick because the well-preserved cervical ribs indicated that the muscles attached here were not massive. Of course, Baryonyx possibly had a thick throat as this structure would be pretty helpful for fish-catching animals. The extraordinarily well-preserved neck fossil of Baryonyx shows that this part was relatively flexible, allowing it to use its chopstick-like mouth to catch fish and small animals, as well as perform many other actions. 
The entire body of Baryonyx was slim with slightly elongated neural spines, albeit not as high as those of Spinosaurus or even the later Suchomimus. However, the neural spines of Baryonyx were still taller overall than those of ordinary dinosaurs, with the highest located in the pelvis and extending to the tail. The transverse processes of its tail were also well developed, giving the tail base a relatively broad, muscular appearance, and providing this dinosaur with a flexible tail. Some scholars initially believed that this structure, coupled with the tall neural spines of its tail, may have allowed this dinosaur to swim, but no more evidence could support this hypothesis. Even if Baryonyx may have preyed on fish, there is insufficient evidence to prove that it was an animal that frequently swam in water. Its hind limbs were slender and well-preserved, making the fossil one of the best preserved hind limbs among the Spinosaurids. The hind limb to body ratio suggests this dinosaur was a fast runner. Its feet did not display any adaptations for an aquatic lifestyle, just the typical theropod feet resembling those of land-walking birds. It had four toes. The reconstructed toes, along with extra pads, appeared chubby. Although Baryonyx front claws were large when viewed alone, its forelimbs were still slender and petite, compared to the body. Its forelimbs were slender, and so were its fingers. The first finger was very short, and the most salient claw was this one. Moreover, the mentioned claw was not particularly curved. Despite this claw showing a curvature, it was too far to reach the shape of the claw on the hind limbs of dromaeosaurids such as Deinonychus. The claws of this dinosaur were still relatively flexible and could move up and down. From the part where it connected to the digit, we found that this dinosaur may not have large, round finger pads like modern birds, so the inside of its fingers looks relatively flat. Although this claw was very flexible, it may not have a relatively thick finger pad like some bird claws that are good at grasping. Good. The above concludes the restoration process of Maxim the Baryonyx. Thank you all.